Hey guys, it's Wingy here and welcome back to a brand new episode of Bucket List Movies. For those of you who don't know, this is the series where I watch movies that I haven't seen yet that are supposed movies that you need to see before you die. So I'm going to give my initial thoughts going into the movie, bugger off and watch it, and then come back and give a little review and let you know whether or not it is truly a Bucket List movie and something that you have to watch before you die. This time around, I'm watching Blade Runner. Reason being the sequel's out this year, I've wanted to see it for a while, it's one of my most anticipated movies. So yeah, fuck it, let's do it. So going into Blade Runner then, like I just said a second ago, this is one of my most anticipated movies on my list of films to watch. I don't know why. Like the DVD has just been on the floor in my living room for a long time and I've just never picked it up and watched it, but I have always meant to. But now I'm finally watching it, I'm finally sitting down and going into this, like I say, I am excited, but I'm also going in with a sense of trepidation at the same time. I'm not expecting anything action-packed or mind-blowing or anything like that. Just an entertaining movie. Like I love love science fiction and I've heard and seen that the dystopian future in this is incredible. I've been told this movie is quite slow, which could be an issue, but we'll see. As long as the story is interesting enough and the characters are well developed, then I won't really care if the plot itself is quite slow. I do quite like it sometimes. You know, as opposed to just racing around and explosions here, explosions there, sometimes it is nice just to relax and go through the story as it unfolds naturally, as opposed to just rushing everything from the get-go. And whilst I am excited for it, I'm very very worried that this is going to be a big disappointment because I am going in with very high expectations which you naturally would have having wanted to see something for years you are bound to think that it's going to be good or at least hope it's good I've heard this is quite a thought-provoking movie which if that's the case and that's great because like I said before there's no point in just having pointless action and explosions like the Transformers movies when you could have something that actually makes you think and question you as a person or society as a whole that to me is far more intriguing than just really want to enjoy this movie. That's my mindset going into it and hopefully, hopefully, hopefully I won't be disappointed. Also because I know Blade Runner has multiple different versions, I have no idea which version I'm watching. I don't know if it's the theatrical release, the director's cut, the whatever cut, I don't know which version it is. I will tell you once I've watched it and when I come back. So if I've watched the wrong version then I apologise but in the comments below if you have seen it let me know which is the best version to watch. I mean by the time you see this it'll be too late anyway but just so I know for future reference which one is the the best one. So now I'm gonna go away, I'm gonna watch the film, hopefully it's good, I'll be back in a sec, for you at least, and I'll tell you what I think of Blade Runner. One eternity later. I still don't know what version I watched, but that was definitely an experience. So I've watched the film now, I am back, and here is my review of Blade Runner. Now when I said then an experience, that is exactly what this movie is. Now I said before, I had heard that it was slow, and it is. But the thing is, you get so invested into this world and what is going on, and the way that it looks especially is just so gorgeous. You fall into this incredible neo-noir science fiction world and it is just brilliant. The pacing is slow, like I say, but it's as fast as it needs to be. This isn't an action movie. This is a more thinking piece and it really does make you think. There's a lot of elements in here to do with various different things such as artificial intelligence or replicants as they're known in this. There's the sense of morality, the sense of what it really means to be a human and the use of technology in our modern society. All throughout this film, you're just so intrigued as to what is happening in this world and you do really relate to Deckard. Is it Ducard or Deckard? Yeah, Deckard. You really do relate to Deckard and his struggle thinking, is this the right thing that I'm doing? There's so many things in this movie as well that you can tell, even though it wasn't the best received movie when it came out, you can tell it's a cult classic now because the amount of stuff that is in this movie that has influenced or been referenced to in projects or films or TV shows further down the line, it's incredible. The entire place itself reminds me of Coruscant in Star Wars Episode 2. The scene where he's chasing the stripper woman and shoots her through the glass, that is definitely something that they reference in Red Dwarf Back to Earth. And I could be wrong, people may get offended for me saying this, but I feel like Pris was definitely an influence in the creation of Harley Quinn for DC. And there's other elements like that that you recognise from other things that have come further down the line, and it really does show that this is such an incredibly influential movie. Going back to the way that it looks, typically when you see futuristic worlds, they're all pristine. In this, it's not. Everything looks a bit battered, everything looks a bit used and worn, and it really adds to world building in this movie. That was gorgeous 
gorgeous as it looks visually, the way that this was directed by Ridley Scott is really impressive. Like, it looks like nothing else I've seen before. He's so innovative with the way that he uses his shots, whether it's the lens flare, not like J.J. Abrams, but whether it's a lens flare or light flashing on somebody's face or where he just places the camera or the angle that he puts the camera at. There's a lot of interesting ways that he has shot this movie. And in terms of Ridley Scott movies, for me, this is definitely up there with the Alien movies, the good ones at least. Whether you think this film is boring or not, if you've seen it, you can't deny how gorgeous it looks and the way that it's shot is so interesting and unique. And well, to be fair, that's the main thing that I would use to describe this film. It's interesting, unique and very, very intriguing. As for the cast, well, Harrison Ford is Harrison Ford. You kind of know what you get with Harrison Ford in these types of films. Well, any film, really. Rutger Hauer in this movie is really good, and he gets more and more creepy as the film goes on. In fact, the way his character develops through this movie, it's almost the same as the tone. It gets more atmospheric and creepy the more the film goes on. But I definitely enjoyed this movie. Like, I was very happy that I did, because I went into this, like I said before, really hoping that this would be good, and it is. It's more than good it's great but here's where my issue is because is it a bucket list movie yes and no. This is one of those films, I mean, you know the type of film, something like this, something like Donnie Darko, films like that, you need to see them more than once because if you don't, you can't fully appreciate them. Whilst I like it a lot from first viewing, I don't feel like I love it, so I do feel that I need to see it again. Having said that, if you haven't seen this movie and it does sound like something that would intrigue you, yes, I would say it's a bucket list movie and that you should check it out. However, if you don't think that this movie would sound interesting to you in the slightest, then maybe not. I would still say give it a go, but maybe not hold your breath. Basically, if you think you'll like it, you will. If you don't, then you won't. But still give it a go. So yes, Blade Runner. It's a weird one. It is, and it isn't a bucket list movie. For me, because I did want to see a movie like this, yes, it is a bucket list movie. And I am curious to see what they're going to do with the sequel. Personally, I don't think they need one. I am worried that it is actually going to taint this film. But then again, who knows? You know, sometimes sequels are better than the original film. We've seen that on multiple different occasions. Stranger things have happened in this occasion though, I can't see it, but this is definitely a, a very interesting and intriguing movie experience that I am so glad that I finally got around to doing it. It's one of those movies where you're not questioning what's happening, you're kind of questioning yourself in a way. And I like that from a movie. I like when it challenges you as a person and this definitely did for me. I really enjoyed it. Forgot to mention the music. The music in this, the score, whatever you want to call it, phenomenal. It fit perfectly. In fact, I've never heard a score in a movie fit what is happening on screen more so than in this movie. There are films out there that have incredible soundtracks, but the one to this, it's so different, and yet it fits what this film is. Vangelis did a really, really great job with the soundtrack. So if you're into your movie scores or whatnot, this is one to check out. And that is what I think of Blade Runner. Book it this movie for some, maybe not for others, but there you are. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Next on Bucket List Movies, I don't know. I'll look through my list because I've got a list of stuff, but in the comments below, let me know what you think of Blade Runner. Do you love it? Do you hate it? On the fence about it? Whatever it is, let me know in the comments below because I was excited for this and it delivered for me. I'm just curious to see if other people had that same experience with the film. But if you enjoyed this video, then make sure you leave a like. That would be greatly appreciated. If you want to see more bucket list movies or any of the other crap that is on my channel, then make sure you subscribe. And if you do, I would love you forever. But until next time, guys, take care of yourselves. Goodbye. The way that Ridley Scott has shot a lot of these shots... <laughs> that just sounds like a fucking word thing. The way that Ridley Scott shot a lot of the... That's like a rap that I'm doing. That's really bizarre.